Good evening, everyone. Um, thank you so, so much for joining us this Wednesday. Um, it is an absolute pleasure to be here um, and be with you all. I want to welcome you to our program. My name is Hannah Turpin, um, and I'm the organizing curator of El Perez, the 84th installment of Carnegie Museum of Arts Forum Series, um, which excitedly debuts a new body of work titled Devotions by our featured speaker tonight, New York-based artist El Perez. Um, for major funding towards this exhibition and the forum series, I would like to thank the Juliet Lee H. Simons Foundation, as well as the Fellows of Carnegie Museum of Art, the Virginia Kaufman Fund, and the R Ruth Levine Memorial Fund. Uh, the exhibition is currently on view at CMOA and is up through August 22nd. And I encourage you all to go in person if you're able uh, and visually hold this work um, as it truly is so, so special. And I'm really excited for you all to hear about it tonight from the artists themselves. Um, and you can visit cmoa.org to purchase your time tickets to do that. Also on the website, uh, you can find registration information for our other program related to this exhibition, which is a book club diving into Leslie Feinberg's seminal 1993 text, Stone Butch Blues. This is being led by University of Pittsburgh's professor in gender, sexuality, and women's studies, Julie Bolu. Um, and the upcoming sessions are on July 13th and 27th at 6.30 p.m. Eastern time. Um, and the program is open to both newcomers and long-term fans of the book. So everyone, please feel welcome to join. Just a reminder that tonight's program is being recorded. Um, also, this is a safe space. And so we ask that you please approach the speakers and the attendees from a place of openness, learning, and compassion. Any harassment, hate speech, or disrespectful behavior will not be tolerated. And so without further ado, I will happily uh, pass the baton off to my amazing colleague, Dana Bishop Root, our Director of Education and Public Programs, who will be leading tonight's conversation. Thanks, Dana. Thank you so much, Hannah. And I'm so honored to be here with you all. And Hannah, thank you for shepherding this exhibition into the Carnegie Museum of Art. The first time I entered devotions, I joined a fellow museum worker in the long rectangular gallery, both of us looking separately at Elle's work, but with a sharedness of knowing, each of us were looking alongside of an acknowledgement of our unfamiliarity with each other in a shared space. Entering into devotions for me was a process of how I look, be with, be next to these artworks that in scale alone, activate an awareness of self, of body, in relation to. The works did not allow me to just look. Instead, they welcomed me or possibly even pushed me gently to join them in their intimacies, to locate myself next to, alongside, far away from, in between, up against, expanded landscapes of bodies, of water, of ground of touch, of position, of choice, of maintenance, of possibility. Social constructions and the necessary labor and energy to maintain singular power structures position other as bad, as negative, as wrong, existing on a binary. Poet Nathaniel Mackey, as inspired by Amiri Baraka, suggests that there is the noun other, which is social, and there is the verb other, which is artistic. Social othering has to do with power and exclusion. It is something to be literally marginalized. The verb other, the artistic other, is upon which cultural health is dependent and which our interdependence is celebrated, is ever present. Elle's artwork is a patient welcome, one that asks us to locate ourselves, one that creates space to locate ourselves in our otherness and with each other. Multiplicity of intimacies between friends, lovers, training, self, L in process, in production, and bodies of work leaves no room for a binary, no either or, no this or that, or no this is and this isn't, now or later or before or after. And in this interruption of a linear binary, we, mu we just may find ourselves. And in that we find each other. El Perez, born 1989, Bronx, New York, lives and works in New York City. 
Through August of 2022, their solo exhibition devotions is on view here at the Carnegie Museum of Art. Other recent solo exhibitions include From Sun to Sun 2019, Public Art Fund New York, and Diablo 2018, MoMA PS1 New York. Perez's work has been included in group exhibitions at the Renaissance Society Chicago, Barbican Center London, Brooklyn Museum New York, and the Whitney Museum of American Art New York. They are currently a visiting assistant professor of visual and environmental studies at Harvard University and Dean at the Skohegan School of Painting and Sculpture. Perez is represented by 47 Canal New York. So welcome to each of you who are here with us, sharing the space together for this evening and welcome Elle. Thank you so much, Dana, thank you so much. Um, that was such an incredible introduction. Um, and I am so, I'm just so happy to be here. And I, yeah, I just wanted to say thank you um, to you and thank you to Hannah and thank you to Dan and Eric for making this show possible um, and making this conversation possible. Thank you for your willingness to be here. So um, just for folks that are here, please feel free to put questions in the chat or in the Q&A and we'll monitor them as they come in and I'll try to integrate them um, into the conversation as possible. And Elle and I didn't talk too much before about kind of structure, but um, I think it makes sense to start with looking at some work. And, um, you know, some of the things that, you know, what I'll do is I'll kind of provide some prompts, um, mm -hmm. but I know that we want to talk both, use this time together because we're not in the gallery to talk, talk both about the work, but also about the process, um, which is something that we have to be intentional to make space for because so often it's the artwork that the public and the audience is kind of given. Um, and this is an opportunity for us to also be given the process. So thank you for your willingness and interest to do that with us. So Elle, these, um, well, they were, I feel like we're in an order, but now I feel like they're not in the same order. Um, but I'm wondering if it would be helpful to look at the images one more time through, or do you wanna start with an image? I think we could look at them one time. Let's look at them again one time through. Okay. Um, Great. Maybe what I'll do is, you know, it's interesting because the order of these images is so <laughs> important to how the show works. Yeah. Um, and it's what I understand you call a sentence. Uh, um, yeah. And it seems that my, the Google presentation has rearranged itself. <laughs> so I apologize. Um, okay. But I would love to talk about kind of how you do make relationships. And I think we could start um, on the left wall of the gallery, there is this set, um, mm -hmm. the two bodies of water um, embracing the two bodies embracing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think like um, when one of, I'm trying to think, I'm just sort of orienting for um, for where to start, because I think it's, it's sort of kind of everything sort of moves, um, in relationship to itself with, um, just the way that these images kind of come together. So 
I think in starting like those two, those four images that we were just looking at, the two of the ocean and the two of Tamashi and Ali, um, those two images, those two sets of images um, for me are really kind of like the structure, the almost like the, um, the kind of anchor of the show, or if I had to like really kind of reduce it down to, you know, it's most um, it's like economic form, I think it would be, it would be those four photographs kind of coming together. Um, and I had been thinking a lot about the, um, like as I was kind of pulling, well, so maybe I'll, I'll back up a little bit and sort of start off with the way that I work. Um, and sort of the way that like a project or like a body of work or, you know, a moment, um, you know, I really kind of see an exhibition less so as like um, a moment where less, less so as like a, an, a finished body of work and more of a kind of um, opportunity to take um, like, get a sense of sort of where things are or what kind of, uh, what the what my own thoughts are in relationship to photography and to my own images and to like, you know, maybe even things that I'm not fully even cognizant of um, at the beginning of the kind of exhibition. And so often I'll kind of work with images that usually span about like a year and a half while also like making new images. And so that's what I had done for, um, for this exhibition. Um, and so that usually will start um, with maybe sort of a, an idea. Um, and the idea for this show or the thing that I had been really kind of thinking about was um, in relationship to like an, an idea that I had just kind of finished working on, um, which was this, series of images that um, that I put together for the Whitney Biennial. Um, and those images had a kind of relationship to each other that had to do um, maybe very like overtly with um, sort of thinking about intimacy, thinking about transformation, thinking about, um, you know, one's ability to change one's body. And so really kind of thinking of that maybe moment of, um, declaration or decision or, um, you know, really visceral kind of in the moment things like, um, like the vial of testosterone or, um, you know, there was um, images of friends um, performing kind of blood play on each other and also needle play. And so the, that kind of sort of contained visceral moment um, was really what that was, um, that kind of configuration of images was thinking about. Um, and then after that, I was sort of thinking about, um, you know, there was always kind of like a counterpoint, I think in, in, my, in my own thinking. And so <laughs> one of the questions that I had for myself, um, especially after something like the Whitney, which can feel so, or can be described really, um, cause I didn't necessarily feel it as definitive but it's really described as like, you're making this kind of definitive statement or something. And, and so I just sort of thought like, well, what if I just took the same starting point and did something totally different um, and went in a totally different direction. And at the same time, I had also been thinking a lot about kind of um, maintenance, like maintaining, um, one's body uh, in maintaining, maintaining one's relationships, maintaining um, one's um, just even kind of like thought. And so that, that was, um, was something that I had started to really kind of think about, like not so much the, the singular moment, but the kind of extended time around it and all of that kind of, all of the, the, you know, the work and the thought and the love and the time that goes into that. And so starting from that point, um, I was sort of thinking about these things as having a relationship to, um, you know, what, and then it was like, okay, like, what have I, what have I done or what am I doing or what can I do um, that kind of pulls on these ideas um, or, or 
because often I really try and get, I really try and work from the work first. So like the photographs that I made, I look at, and then I'm sort of kind of like, okay, what am I doing? As opposed mm-hmm. to having an idea and then trying to push it out in photographs. Um, and that lets me find things out about myself <laughs> or like find things out that I didn't necessarily like. Um, yeah. think it's would- like you're creating, you are in relationship to the photographs. Yeah. This exactly. is, and I think that's, you know, there's not an exclusion of self. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, and so that that was um, that's sort of the the background context for then the starting point that this show found itself for that kind of core configuration of the oceans and Tamashi and Ali because it was um, initially I had picked one image had these two pictures of Tamashi and Ali where each of them were taking turns kind of looking at the camera and I was like oh, am I going to ever choose one like. I'm going to choose one. And I, there was a point at which I did choose one um, and I wasn't happy with it. And then I realized after doing that, that it was actually two images. And then Mm -hmm. that allowed me to kind of um, then see the kind of relationship that each of them had to not only to each other, but then also to the viewer and to the gaze. And then that kind of, it formed a kind of cycle almost like you could look at them and then someone was you know, always sleeping and someone was always looking. And then the oceans also had this kind of um, feeling of, of a kind of cycle as well. And so how that would then kind of come in um, and have this kind of, I don't know, relationship to um, a sort of sustaining um, that is maybe different than maintenance, but also sort of um, has maybe a, a kind of a similar like um, scale to it or something, a similar time. There is a presence of, of time. Um, and so that, that sort of is where, um, out of that is where the two, those two sets um, sort of came together and other images, um, we're also in relationship to that. But I think I think actually from this point, from having done the show, having built it, having um, having like really kind of like spent a lot of time with it now, I can identify that as like the, mm-hmm. the, the core thread through the show. Um, and that will probably feed the next thing, um, you know, the next thing that happens. So so that's sort of, uh, that that's sort of a, a a little bit of background context, a little bit of specificity, hopefully, <laughs> and then also um, maybe just a place to maybe just a place to start. Yeah, and I I appreciate that. There's a few things that I want to not lose, which is kind of your work to resist a kind of exhibition or this kind of way we frame a body of work as a definitive statement, and why that's important to your practice, mm-hmm. um, and kind of what it means to resist that and what it does, and then also. Of course, I want to return to maintaining, Um, but then also to just stay on these images a bit. um, I think in some writing that you did around the exhibition, you mentioned, you know, Fire Island is mentioned in both of these water images. And, um, you know, in some writing, you said this isn't the most important necessary for the viewer to know, but it's a it's a sweet spot um, for me. And or it makes it sweeter for me. Mm -hmm. And I think then you write, it adds a certain context to what kind of planet you may have just landed on or what ocean you are about to crawl out of. And Mm -hmm. it's something that I'm really interested in is kind of what the work in general is doing to, and I think this is where maintaining comes in, to Mm -hmm. constantly kind of communicate that these things are constructed, that there is this kind of practice that's involved um, in kind of the world as we know it. Mm. But then there's also at the same time in that there's this like building of this other set of possibilities. Mm -hmm. And for me, when I, you know, this kind of the anchor of the oceans in Tomashi and Ali refer to where the possibilities exist, like it feels like the kind of, the place that we are not yet or, but it is also here. Mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I think that that um oh that's so that was really beautiful. I'm so glad that this is recorded. <laughs> I'm, I'm so looking forward to being able to further like just reflect on your words. Um, yeah, I think one of the things that I I had really been thinking about was this sort of sense of like how to build a world. Um, and that was like part of my own kind of personal challenge with this exhibition was um, I had been working in these kind of configurations um, previously and they, they had started in sort of like a two image configuration that was in an exhibition that I had at 47 Canal. And then they were sort of like building and then the Whitney was like, okay, how do I do that with, with you know, a whole run of images? And then this show, the question for me was like, how do you do that with, um, you know, an entire exhibition? How do you make something that is, um, you know, how do you make something, how do you make a group of images their own system, um, really, where they can kind of sustain each other and they can inform each other and they can build out maybe their own possibilities. And so that was um, something that for me was like the, my own sort of like personal um, challenge in thinking about like how to organize um, and how to sort of raise the bar on sort of what these, what the image to image relationships were doing um, and how that kind of existed. And so I think one of the questions then became like, how do you build a world? Like, how do you, how and, and where, you know, <laughs> does this world um, sort of exist? And so that for me um, was obviously, it was pulled from a lot of different places, but it meant that, that there were certain sort of maybe like rules or um, things that could, you know, be just totally um, lost or something and just allowed to sort of, you know, set their own kind of standards. And so um, that alongside, like, then thinking about, like, this sort of weather system. Um, and so because, you know, COVID just sort of COVID, COVID, I think, you know, it came into so many projects, but maybe the way it came into my project was that initially um, the, um, the, the, the room that it was initially kind of programmed for was a, um, was, a, was kind of like a rectangle, like an open rectangle. Um, and so that space was something that for me, I, I realized I could create a kind of like weather system um, using like both the oceans and using Tomashin Alley. And so that then allowed me to kind of like build out the rest of the rest of the space. And so then when it translated into its new space, which is really, really gorgeous, like the um that was sort of like, okay, like, you know, maybe that um is something that was really helpful for me to know in the in the inception of sort of creating this configuration but it's you know it's not the you know it's one of the things that can that can let's see if it can sustain itself without the shape or something mm -hmm. which was you know an interesting thing and I hope that it's done that <laughs> but um but I think that was sort of like okay like there's there's water there's weather there's people there's this type this is what's being kind of modeled and then um and then I had been taking a lot of images from the perspective like of looking at the shore, like from the water, looking back at the shore. And what I love about these two ocean images is that they feel like, they really do feel like you've kind of arrived on another planet. And um, and we sort of, I like, you know, really kind of worked on them in the printing in order to make them feel like they were um, something that was sort of, um, like slightly maybe foreign to like that kind of recognizable and yet um, slightly strange. Um, and that was something that I had been kind of playing with that, like hitting that kind of nuance. Um, and for me, the kind of the where you are in the water, like has, I think such a like, there's something about the, the the flip of position or something of being not 
um, in on ground on a kind of stable ground, but instead being in like this fluid space that is constantly like swelling and moving and swirling and um, has so much kind of force behind it. Um, and that being the ground that you're um, standing on or, you know, within as opposed to on. Um, and so that was something that I was like, oh, okay, so there's, um, you know, a couple of other images in the show that also have either references to, um, to fluid. So one of the ways that this show sort of built itself was through um, like the relationship between like the ocean foam and the bubbles that you can see on the surface and like some of the images. And then um, like the image of the two fingers, like if you go in the, in the print, when you can see it in real life, um, one of the first things that you notice is that the, the structure of the foam is also mirrored kind of in um, this bodily fluid. Um, and then that then is kind of further, um, yeah. Um, I wish we could like zoom in, but just yeah. trust me it's there. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm having trouble. Um, I'm just having, I'm like I'm having finger, finger, my own finger trouble um, as I'm going through the images. So, That's okay. No, um, no Maybe worries. actually, let's just do one technical adjustment. Hannah, maybe if you share your screen, then you can do full screen and then I can, and then when Elle references an image, you could pull it up. That might be really helpful. Thank you to our guests for your patience as we, perfect, beautiful. Okay, sorry to interrupt, Al. I see the foam. Yes. <laughs> yeah, and then there's um, another image of the writer, um, Aurora Mattia, and she is, an, um, she has changed, she changed her name in between the time when um, we put this image um, in the, um, when we made these images and put the images in the show and then um, since has has changed her name. And I talked to her about what she wanted to do about titles since um, she's someone who I've photographed for a number of years. Like we have a, a relationship and a, a friendship that, you know, spans at least six or seven years now. And so, and she had kind of said that she wanted to keep the titles like as they were. So, um, so this picture um, was also one that kind of came once that once I had made um, I had made this picture, I was able to kind of string together like the ocean, the foam, um, the fingers, and then um, this picture and kind of seeing that sort of swelling also behind her was something that for me linked all of the images together and allowed them to kind of exist in the same world and then also um, be like one component of it. So they could also kind of, um, that could have um, a kind of relationship that lived on the wall. And then also these other, these images could also have relationships with other images too, um, which felt like um, really exciting um, for me as a way to sort of discover the work. And I think in those relationships, I think that's where something happens because the intentionality of relationships of the images exists so strongly um, mm -hmm. that something happens with the, the viewer or the public in that we can't separate ourselves from the images. Um, and it is an interruption of being able to position yourself because you are in relationship to. So it's like everyone mm. is negotiating and renegotiating their relationships. And I think it makes me, I, I've thought a lot about proximity and recognition mm. um, in the ways that I think, you know, Judith Butler talks a lot about um, kind of how, how both proximity um, and recognition kind of create our relationship to our ethical obligations mm. um, that we have. And I kept thinking about it in this, in this work um, that also proximity 
and recognition creates our kind of intimacy, a solicitation for our intimacies. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah. And I think that, so something that I wrote down um, when thinking about it that Judith Butler says is bonds are created through the reversibility between proximity and distance. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that happens, you know, like you said, it's like with the, both with kind of where you are, where the water is, where you are in that world. Um, and then, yeah. Yeah, no, and, and I think that's something that I think about, and it's so funny because this is such a, um, I think about, I think about proximity a lot. And I think about, I, in relation to everything that you just mentioned, like about the way that like where the position where I am when I'm making the image. Um, but another place that I really think about proximity, like a ton, like so much is actually in the print itself. Mm -hmm. um, and so that for me becomes the kind of like this site that another person who is not in, you know, who is not a part of this uh, initial experience between me and Aurora, like, another person coming to that and having a totally separate experience, but having something that, um, that they can get close to. And so that is where, like, for me, the scale of the prints, um, the kind of invitation to kind of really come up to them and like really be able to like get into the detail of the work and also to, um, you know, the, the prints are really made with the idea that they will be closely inspected. <laughs> and so this is like, it's a pretty like, um, it's a pretty long like process because they're they're really finely tuned um, in color, in detail, in focus, in, um, you know, being able to have something that someone, if they want to, um, can come up to, can stay in front of, can, find more from the longer that they look at it. And that's one of the things that for me, like um, is one of the areas that I give um, the most, the most attention, not the most attention, maybe not, I would say a lot of attention. I don't, I don't know what the area, what is the area I give the most attention to is just a good question for me, but um, maintenance, but it's worth it. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> <laughs> general maintenance but it is like um you know that that follows that for me is um that the importance of proximity I think in the kind of philosophical sense is really important to also have in the physical sense when the print is um in the gallery when the print is um you know on the wall and someone can kind of come up to it and have this kind of relationship to it um and so that and, and maybe even feel sort of like um, called to it without, called to come closer to it. Like I want something to be there for you when you go up to the picture. I want you to kind of be given something, rewarded something. Like I want you to understand something more as a result of having taken that step. And so that's why I really kind of like spend so much time kind of printing um, and really kind of fine tuning and um, building, really building the prints out um, with like burning and dodging and mm. um, detail kind of work. So, yeah. <laughs> and do you work at the same, so when you're doing that, are the prints, do you, I mean, like what scale are you working at? There, like, the, it, like you're on the computer and then you print it out to see where it is or. Yeah, yeah. I mean, a lot of my own kind of process of pulling images together or building these kind of configurations that I make like uh, of images, like a lot of it does involve just sort of getting a sense of what size an image is. And so that looks like, you know, printing something at 16 by 20 and printing something at like 44 inches and printing something at 54 inches and like you know just figuring out what um what kind of size relationship um how the size like affects someone's body how the size affects like how you're um moving how 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 it acts on you right um and so that's that's something that is 
um, definitely a part of the work and is something that like, yeah, like at there's, um, you know, the, the process is fairly, um, <laughs> I'll spare you the, the gory details, but um, at a certain point, like when, you know, the image, um, when we're working on the images, like I, I work with a printer um, and we will really sort of like have the image be its full scale, its full size. And then really kind of in every corner of the picture is sort of be assessing color and detail and making like kind of minute adjustments. So, so yeah, it is definitely like a very like scaled process. Um, and, and this is great because there is a question um, from our public, which is in terms of proximity, do you find yourself consciously photographing your subjects up close or using Zoom, physical or digital to get in closer than you're physically standing? So this is- Yeah, definitely. I mean, that's something that, um, I think it's it's one of those things where it's like, Although recently I've kind of been like, okay, I have to change the equation now. <laughs> like, you know, not even that it's an equation, but just that, not the equation that it's like, you know, X plus Z equals whatever, but more like, what's the problem? What is the, um, I like to think about photography in relationship to like, um, you know, something like a, it's not really like, I'm, I'm using very general language because it's, shorthand for myself, but I sort of think about it as like, almost like every picture is kind of like its own, um, like complex problem to be resolved or something. And so like that has um, a relationship to the way that like then, um, like I'll sort of look for a different, kind of solution or maybe one solution. So for example, there is a picture, there is a picture that I've made, um, which is of a platano palm that had, um, like that had, was exposed um, from behind. And so like, you could see the internal ribs of the palm and it was um, kind of photographed, cropped so that it was all you could see. And then we print, I printed it at like 50, um I'm always referring to I, I I also like I don't know what this is about but I always use we but I'm actually just it's just me like, <laughs> like it's, it's the like, it's the multiplicity <laughs> of you Al. it yes, makes perfect I, sense <laughs> I'm like we printed it I printed it um but <laughs> like maybe it just uh I'm just like yeah making it bigger but um but it was printed at like 55 inches tall and so that was something that was like you could really feel like you were inside this thing mm -hmm. that um, you wouldn't have a physical relationship to like that in real life. And so then in this show, um, the picture of the fingers was something that I was like, oh, that's so, that's, that picture um, <laughs> was so interesting because it was allowing, it allowed for um, something that's so sort of like fleeting um, to be sort of like able to be studied in a way that I don't think um, you know, I don't, I don't know, but, <laughs> you know, I'm just saying, um, has maybe, you know, maybe for someone had, had, maybe someone had not necessarily studied the, the structure of, um, you know, this kind of bodily fluid. And so that also was something that was happening with the light. And so like in kind of figuring out how to sort of make this picture, a lot of it had to do with like kind of where to position the light, where to model the light, where to kind of put it. And a lot of, and I actually found it was a very similar process to making that palm image um, because of the way that this, you know, um, very sort of ephemeral, um, organic, like material needed to be sort of lit very specifically in order to even become visible at all. Um, and so that was, that was something that like when thinking about kind of like then making this image large enough so that those tiny bubbles then are like related to um you know the ocean and something that's like you know that kind of that kind of relationship between a single body and you know the bot the ocean uh the body of water 
um, you know, and then this kind of body of water. Um, and yeah, and so I think like that, that is something that is always kind of conscious for me, this kind of role of proximity, this role of getting closer, this role of, you know, whether it's a kind of physical proximity or a physical closeness, or just like, um, you know, really kind of getting to know people, really getting to know the, um, the people that I'm photographing. Um, and that can look like different things for, for different people too. And, you know, it's, it's interesting because I think this is where kind of the way that this exhibition really, to me, challenges other and where kind of other as a verb and interdependence comes into it is exactly in, in what you're saying is that kind of what you're doing with scale and this kind of invitation to look closer and be next to something. I mean, this is such a perfect image for that. Like we know that in this Western culture, in this continent, we have learned to be afraid of this substance or it's not something that we're supposed to be near. Like it's either hidden or, um, and so I think that there's kind of just the, the physicality alone of the image and the scale kind of suggests that we can't move away from it. And that, that's, mm -hmm. that it challenges that proposition in itself. And I feel the same with um, kind of the shadow boxer, I think is really mm -hmm. important mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. Um, and there's this question um, in the chat right now, which I think is, you know, is interesting. And I wanna go back to world making as well, but um, this person is kind of asking like, how well they're saying that we're having a really philosophical and perceptive <laughs> conversation which is an incredible compliment but then they're also saying like how do you begin to engage and interact with the photographs in the exhibit if you're not like in this conversation maybe and and i think it's really interesting because i was telling you l that you know we um, have an incredible docent program at the carnegie museum of art and in that um hannah and hannah did a kind of workshop as always with the docents. Um, and these are, our docent core are incredible in terms of how their practice of looking at art and engaging with art and sharing art with our publics. Um, and it was incredible because so much of the feedback from the docents was, you know, at first I mm -hmm. felt like I didn't know how to be with this work. Um, but then we posed a question, set of questions around intimacies, about how people locate intimacies in themselves. And I think that people started to recognize that the scale themselves and what you were offering was an invitation to be close. And mm. that even if it created discomfort, um, that actually what you're doing with your photographs is saying, come closer. Um, mm. That it's okay mm. to look, right? Like that's the other thing is that, mm -hmm. I, mm -hmm. I love that about little kids because they're just like not afraid to look, but we are right. untaught to look <laughs> because if it makes you uncomfortable, then we don't right. want to look. Right. Um, right. Right. I don't know if you have any other responses to that question about how you imagine people engaging with the work. Um, yeah. I mean, I think there's. I think that one of the ways that I kind of think about that is what I had kind of just been describing about really seeing the surface of the photograph and like the the photograph itself as a kind of like as a kind of invitation and um I think there is there are multiple like kind of levels to access the work like there are but I don't think that you need to always be um on all of them. <laughs> you don't need to always be on all the levels, I think. Um, and I think what was interesting about this is that I, or about this kind of group of images is that one of the, I think one of the things that was, um, yeah, I think it's, it's, I'm trying to, I'm trying to figure out how to kind of say this without, without um, maybe, um succinctly but I, I work with a lot of different types of people um and a lot of different types of people are seeing the work I think on on a regular kind of basis and so one of the things that is really rewarding for me is when 
those, um, you know, what might be perceived as like totally kind of different worlds are kind of brought together or able to understand each other. And so this has happened like, this has happened a couple of different times um, in different bodies of work. Like there was a body of work where I was working with entertainment wrestlers and drag queens. And um, I had sort of put it all together. So, you know, the entertainment wrestlers would see me a bunch and they would see their pictures of entertainment wrestlers. And then later, I think I, I showed the whole group of pictures and something like 60 images and they were from um, like Fiesta Patronals and they were from um, drag shows and they were from punk shows and they were from wrestling shows. And I was showing it to my cousin who's a wrestler and he was looking at it and he was like, he was like, okay, I can, he was like, this is really, he was like, I see that what you're interested in is like this sort of through line of artistry. And that was really amazing because I think like, I, I don't know that he would have necessarily said that he had a lot in common with like a drag queen kind of before that, maybe if you, if I was like, even though I was like, I don't know, wrestling drag, they seem very similar to me. Like they're both extremely physical and they love costumes. <laughs> like, you know, it's like really like about like, you know, building a character. Um, but that was, that was kind of one moment that that's happened. And I think this happens this has happened in this work in like a kind of similar way with like some of the, um, you know, the worlds that are kind of being brought together um, within it as well. And so I think that's something that, I think every, I think that one thing that I try to do and that I hope that my work has is like an entry point for everyone. Mm -hmm. um, like I hope that at least one picture can be an entry point for, um, like for, for someone. Um, and so maybe that's how I think about, you know, the question as it was posed, um, which is like, you know, where do people begin to engage and interact with the photographs? And I think where, wherever you can, you know, and then I think then as we're all kind of, you know, it's, it's human to be curious, I think, and it's human to kind of put things together. I think that starts to kind of you know, maybe that starts to happen. Um, and so that's something that, um, you know, that I see, um, I see happen with the work, I've seen happen with the work, I see it happen. And then I hope, I hope that it kind of still kind of happens. Um, so. And, yeah, and I think, you know, this goes back to kind of why it's like, I, we're talking both about your process and where, you know, I think it's, because in the process, as you are creating these kind of, again, like you're saying, you're, you're reacting to a photograph itself, you're reacting to the image that you make, and then you create another image, and then you build context around it. And you mm -hmm. are, your process itself holds multiple entry points. Mm -hmm. um, so mm -hmm. I think that's where kind of when process aligns with kind of what you hope to be the aim of it. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. and the other thing I, I think I wanted to bring in about process is, you know, in this particular set, um, a cycle of photographs, it's so clear that you're also kind of going back to this maintenance and kind of where, where discipline shows up and the learning and the unlearning of something and how we're kind of constantly making and remaking um, ourselves and the way that we look at water or the way that we look at rocks, right? Yeah. Um, that that's when you were talking about your process, I was like, oh, right, that discipline, that kind of edge where you're kind of walking and like pushing and pulling and finding is present mm -hmm. in the process as well of what happens in what's being communicated by the images themselves. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. and, and then thinking about world making and going back to this question, which I don't, is, you know, one of the things about um, the work that I think, you know, as, a institution that works with quote, a you know, wide range of publics. There's this kind of question always of like, how do things live in a museum? How does a museum learn from the work? Um, what is, what can be shown in a museum even, even though there's supposed to be these spaces where so much is shown, you know, like what are the things that we're bringing to when we select the images for an exhibition? Um, and I think that on one hand, you could say like you're making a world, 
um, mm. in this exhibition. And then on the other hand, which might be very other to somebody. Mm. And on the other hand, you're also creating a world in which someone actually gets to be. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I think we've seen that with reactions to this exhibition, which is really incredible. Mm. And I think kind of how one enters into the exhibition is what we have to learn from our, about ourselves. Mm. Mm. Um, mm. So wow. yeah, it's like making, making a world that is already here that we are also finding. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, yeah. If yeah. anyone else has, oh, there is this other question, which I think you really did speak to, but um, do you pose the people in your photos or give them prompts and let them react? So. Yeah, that's such a, that's such a, um, that's such a good question because it's kind of neither. Um, in a way it is that they're all usually just, <laughs> you know, art is great because you can really say things that are otherwise so, um, you know, I mean, this goes back to what you were saying about looking, Dana, but I'll just kind of watch people. Like I'll watch um, friends and I'll sort of see something that they do because what I'm kind of interested in is a almost like being able to capture or to be able to like sort of have this moment that is, um, that is like almost like pulled from real life. And so, you know, with the exception of this one, <laughs> this is a kind of outlier for that, but, um, but maybe, you know, one of, um, there's one of either the one of Aurora or the one of, of Ashley, um, like that is like, that this picture, like um, I had seen her do that with her belt. Like I had seen her kind of pose with her belt and I actually had taken a reference photo on my iPhone when she was doing it. Cause um, we were just having like a conversation about like Costco or something, you know, it was like totally benign conversation. And, um, and she was holding her belt and her pants in this like really interesting way. And that's how she was sort of, um, you know, that's how her body was resting. That's how she was sort of like holding herself and, you know, not moving and just kind of, we were like, oh, she's got, like artichokes. Um, but like <laughs> asparagus, like, you know, um, and I was like, oh wait, actually like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna like, I'm gonna take a reference photo of this, of this gesture, of this pose that you're in. And I wanna recreate it. Cause like, you know, the, the, um, the entryway to like the apartment is not the, it's not the, it's not the, it's not the space <laughs> for this picture. Um, but and sometimes it can be, but it was just like, it was a little too cluttered. So I was like, okay, I don't know. I was like, um, and so then um, this was, so this was kind of restaged from that gesture. And so because it's such a, because it's a familiar gesture, to her body it's easy to kind of recreate it it becomes easy to sort of get into it but it also requires that also requires like a really it requires something really interesting which um which I I have to rely on a lot which is that the person actually has to trust me enough to not become overly self-conscious because at that moment then the kind of magic of what they were doing sort of, you know, can dissipate and be replaced with a kind of self, like a kind of wall that has to do with like, you know, being uncomfortable being looked at. So they also have to be comfortable with me looking at them um, for an extended period of time. And so that relationship takes, can take a long time to build. It can take a very short time to build. It's really, it depends person to person. Um, but usually I'll kind of like introduce the idea of a photograph, like, like <laughs> anywhere from like that day to like a year <laughs> in advance or something. Like there were some pictures where like, uh, it literally took a year to make. Like I sort of said, you know, I was like, hey, I think I would like to make this picture. And I think I would like it to be 
you know, about this kind of, you know, like have to do with this kind of part of you or something. And then the person kind of think about it and then, you know, and then not having any kind of pressure on it, I think also, it also allows for um, a kind of question to be answered, I think, which is what is your investment outside of the photograph? Um, mm -hmm. And different people want different levels of an answer to that before their image is taken. I think just not even like on a kind of transactional level, just like on a, on a personal level, um, you know, I think especially like the way that Instagram has kind of transformed our relationship to portraits, to images of ourselves. Um, I think it's a question that people are asking, you know, ask a lot now, either, either verbally or just internally. And so I feel like allowing people the space to kind of like, you know, assess me <laughs> on their own time. And then I come back around and kind of like, oh, like, what do you think about that? Do you, do you want to do it? You know? And then if they like, if they don't, then we just don't, you know, I'm not, um, at least with this body of work, I'm not trying to kind of overly convince anyone to kind of participate. Um, and then sometimes things are people's ideas, like, um, like the image um, of um, Charles with the um, the saran wrap um, over their face, like that was that image came from an invitation um, that I had been given um, by Charles and Wilding. That essentially they had kind of invited me to to photograph them, um, and I took them up on it and made this picture so that was sort of like entirely um you know i was sort of si sitting sidecar to something that they were doing but it was with the understanding that we were making photographs so it was like a very um you know i think things were a lot more think things were it was both proceeding as normal and completely abnormal because everything was like being <laughs> like every every second there was like okay wait and now 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 hold that but because um I've known Wilding for almost like a decade or over a decade now a decade now over a decade wait yeah about just about like 11 years it's like you know 11 12 years and um and um you know they really understand I've photographed them so many times and they really understand they've seen the work be made, they've seen the work live, they've seen the work be selected, they've seen the work printed, they've seen the work live in the world, they have the, like they have some of my photographs, a lot of my photographs actually that they live with. So they have like a really kind of deep understanding of, um, you know, who I am and the kind of art that I make and what it does on both a kind of, you know, behind the scenes, like making it kind of level and also what it does when you live with it. So I think, you know, they're exceptionally like Wilding and Charles are like, have been exceptionally generous with me mm -hmm. um, and understanding of like what, um, you know, what, what goes into kind of making a portrait. And also, and Wilding has also even drawn some of the pictures, like they drew, um, we made this picture and they drew a version of it. And I was like, <laughs> that was like the best, that was amazing. So I think that to have someone who's in the work, who has that depth of a relationship to the work, like, and that level of trust in me. And also, you know, uh, that is like, that does something for the pictures that I, I think is really hard to, um, it's hard to replicate because it's not just about the image, it's about how it kind of exists um, in like a physical moment, but also in these kind of um, relational moments between us. It's, um, we're kind of towards the end, but I think it's bringing me back to the title of your, of this exhibition, um, which is Devotions. And this text that you shared by Diana Clark, um, what the culture mm -hmm. calls violence, and Diana Clark in that text talks about at first for them that devotions, um, they realized that for them, they had this practice of devotion that mm -hmm. it ended up becoming a kind of self-betrayal. Mm -hmm. um, but their self-transformation through the practice of kink 
um, was recognizing that actually true devotion is the devotion to self that mm -hmm. then creates this kind of ability to be in a place of care. Yeah. And there's this line that I love, um, which is we all risk harm when we exchange intimacies. Mm -hmm. And thinking about what you were saying about, you know, Charles and Wilding letting, welcoming you into their space that in that there and, and any of the people that you photograph or even the rocks <laughs> that you photograph, right? The, the, you know, the day lily in that moment, right? Like that there is this risk of harm of in that welcome whether right. we're the audience, whether it's you, the photographer, um, but it's, it's, it's in the great care of working towards intimacy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. That was that. Yeah. That was so beautiful. And I was just thinking, I was like, yeah, it's, it becomes, yeah, I think the stakes of the work, like are that, that kind of, um, are that risk and are that, um, sort of delicately and I, I think that's also where where this kind of notion of maintenance had come from because you know at this point it's like being this far in to being kind of like an artist like okay we're a lot we're we're clocking like 15 years now you know and it's like it's a lot of relationships to maintain and wanting to do them justice like wanting to do wanting to give wanting to to do that failing at it um, succeeding at it, you know, and in moments and, and that being a kind of, um, you know, thinking about, uh, the, the gravity really of those kind of relationships, um, of all of the, the photographic relationships, um, that I have with other people, my own relationship to photography, like my own relationship to, um, the people who are kind of, who are, who are depicted within the work um, in, you know, in, in so many kind of different ways. Um, also even just thinking about kind of, the, you know, just, just taking on the, um, the stakes around figuration, you know, in photography, like just even that, you know? So I think that that's, um, you know, that is all, sort of where this, you know, not just where this work kind of came from, but also what it had, what it showed me about um, my own ways of working and my own kind of, my own practice, so. Thank you, Elle. Thank you, Dana. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all so much for joining us also. I wish we were seeing your faces as well, but look forward to hearing from you and seeing you in the museum. So Elle, have a good evening. Thank Gratitude. You so Gratitude. I'm gonna be thinking through this conversation for, for some time. And have a good evening, everybody. It's still light outside uh, in Pittsburgh. <laughs> and there's a big, big moon tomorrow night. Just a little weather report for everybody. <laughs> Big <laughs> strawberry moon. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That's strawberry super moon. Oh, incredible. Yeah, it's still, <laughs> still light in Maine too, so. Oh. I know, the wooden room you're in makes me want to be in a sauna, so maybe that's what I'll, I'll try to oh, find a sauna. <laughs> <laughs> welcome, welcome to Scout again, everybody. <laughs> Well, thanks for sharing your evening with us, Al. Thank you so much, Dana. Take care.